Hi, this is Shady Atia, Assistant Professor at Liège University in Belgium, and I'm going to present to you today the topic of research ideas assessment. It's a very important topic because it can help you as a researcher with your supervisor or your peers to assess the quality of your research idea, and it's mainly used during the phase of the proposal development and concept uh, development for your thesis, uh, PhD dissertation or even your research proposal. So I'm inviting you before uh, uh, following this video to follow the previous videos on writing a research proposal, uh, literature review and citations. Especially the first one, writing research proposal, is very linked to this presentation. So I really invite you to, before watching this uh, video to go watch the previous presentation to make sure that you gain the maximum uh, for this presentation. Well, let's start. What and why should we assess research ideas? Well, it's very important to keep into account that there is a lot of research that has been done most of the time in your research area. And always it's very important to distinguish yourself and make sure that you have a different and you have a unique and you have an added uh, value and significance of your research topic. So in this sense, it's not always easy and since you are most of the time a young undergraduate or a postgraduate, not having a lot of experience and depth uh, regarding the research area where you are going to newly explore, this kind of uh, presentation can help you to go through with your supervisor or with your peers to make sure that you develop the idea to make it on the level of uh, international publishable uh, uh, work. So let's work on that and look at the first slide we have. We are talking here about a brief over overview of the innovation of an idea. Normally, when we are uh, looking at an idea or a research idea, we look at the technical doc documentation of your research idea. What kind of uh, support did you provide in association with your concept? And normally you start before working on the proposal to work on this diagram. This is called the quad chart. Uh, diagram and it's a very useful tool we use in order to uh, uh, make sure that you well uh, thought um, about your concept in different uh, multifactorial uh, uh, approach covering very important questions. In the same time the quad chart is one of the requirements for many uh, funding grants when you're writing a proposal for the European Union or for other kind of funding agencies it's very important that to think that reviewers will not read a very long manuscript, something of 25 or even sometimes 30 page. Sometimes what they would like to do in the beginning just to look at a quad chart. And by using a quad chart, what they will do, they will use it to do a first round of selection so that they can very fast compare different research ideas and then later on, based on the quad chart quality, they will decide which proposal will follow in the next selection stage and they can also decide, okay, based on that, we will start to read the proposal. So sometimes all what you have to present for a project or for a research uh, proposal is just a quad chart. This makes it very important, and from here it's very important to contextualize you and make you aware about it. Well, the quad chart is simple graph that is uh, having four quadrants. It starts by having a corner or a, a quarter talking about the aim and objective of the research. Then the following will be on the audience and the stakeholders of your work. The third one is the innovation and added value of your work. And finally, the impact or the expected impact of your research outcomes or your search findings. So this is simply the quad chart. Well, typically it's one page and it's divided in the four quadrants like I described. And this is the standard approach to assess the significance of research. So when I have a researcher, coming to my office discussing with me his or her research idea, the first thing I grab a paper, I cross a kind of uh, quad chart and I start to ask them these questions related to the four topics I described earlier. And from this I start to elaborate with the student on the topic. Well, very important to keep into account that you will develop most probably your quad chart during your research proposal uh, development or even your project uh, uh, development, project proposal development. And in this sense, you will be in the ideation uh, creation process, you will be in the innovative process looking at ideas, you are reading text, 
you are exploring, maybe watching some relative videos on the problem that you would like to work on. And in this time, you are really excited to think about your work. The writing uh, a proposal uh, video is more describing how to write the proposal, but the aim of this presentation is just to go one step before and show you how the process works. Well, it starts with having a thesis or a PhD or a project or a funding proposal or a call. You will come with some ideas you have already in your mind that you thought about and you start looking at literature, looking at uh, uh, similar studies or uh, similar topics to make sure, okay, where I'm going to start with my concept. Well, first thing to do, you have to create a, a, a quad chart and how to create it is the following. Well, what you do normally, when we look at research topics, we are looking at problem-based ideas. That's the most logical, and maybe I would say 80% of research are based on problem-based ideas. And there is spontaneous ideas that are out of the box, based on an interaction, on a reaction, on an accident, on a thought that passes by. And it's very important to uh, uh, keep into account that the more your idea is grounded, meaning that it's related to a societal problem, it's more easier to develop it. To, to develop it. So in this sense, I advise my students always to work on problem-based ideas. I ask them, what's the problem? Is this problem able to be a research problem? And once we have the green light for that, we can develop the idea. Well, if you have the creativity and you have the inspiration to come up with a spontane spontaneous idea out of the blue and really cross it over and make sure that you can push it, this is also welcomed, but keep in mind that this is the, least, the less a kind of volumes of ideas that we, in a daily basis, uh, find in academia. Well, it's very important to start to create your quad chart. How to create it? You have to do a kind of investigation on previous publication of the research lab or the professor or the group you are working with. This is very important because it's not logic to come and propose an idea to a research group or to a professor or a researcher and then tell them, okay, I come with this idea without that you already have surveyed or uh, 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 kind of followed their previous publications and research lab because might be, there will be a repetition. So first thing to do before looking or developing your idea, make sure that previous publication and research uh, uh, topics related to uh, your department or your lab or your uh, research area you're on, you are in, that there is a list and you went through it and you make sure that what you are going to come up or get, get come out as an idea is not already done before. Also, another important thing to do, to do, you have to look at the conferences and the journal papers published in relation to your topic. Today, all of uh, us have access to library catalogs, go in the library catalog, type the keywords related to your topic, make sure that the topics, when they pop up on your listing, they are not already explored. If you find the topic already explored, then you can say, okay, then it's already done. But also, if this second layer of verification uh, guarantees that the topic was not explored before, you can directly uh, uh, go and make sure that the idea is, 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 is relevant. Then you can also look at conferences attended. Sometimes I have some students who come and tell me, well, I have no idea. I don't know what should I do for a thesis. I just should do a master's thesis and I don't have idea. Well, you can look at the list of your different professors or researcher in the university and check what they offer. Sometimes in every university, actually in every university, there is a day for the master's thesis topics or the PhD thesis topics or sometimes you find project. But if you have all these opportunities are not there, then I would advise you to go to attend a conference. Just go and attend a scientific conference related to the topic you like. And once you are there, keep in mind that students, they have always discounts for accessing uh, conferences. Go to the conference, attend the sessions, check what is uh, described there. And based on the topics in a two day conference, you will have a lot of ideas that you come up and also you will be so much updated on the state of the art um, regarding your field of expertise. So this is also an idea if uh, you are not having an experience and if you are not knowing exactly where to start. So this is the first step to do. Make sure that you are already covering uh, the background or the previous uh, uh, topics related to the area where you are going to develop your topic. Second important point I would like to talk about is the big fish, okay? 
Keep in mind that in order to go in depth, the more you go deeper in your analysis and in your identification of your research concept, the more you can have a big catch. Meaning what? Meaning that the shallower or the shorter your approach to investigate and refine and assess your research idea, the, the shallower your findings will be. The more you go with basic idea, very general, very wide, uh, the scope is wide, the problem is not well defined, it's a common problem uh, 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 definition. The more you are in this area, the more you will have very shallow finding, it will, have, it will be difficult to come up with something new. But the more you invest time and work out your concept, develop your proposal, challenge your concept or challenge your idea of your research, the more you can go deeper. And the deeper you go, the bigger the catch will be, meaning that you can have serious findings that are relevant to your society and your scientific community. And in this sense, I really urge you to not do it so fast. Take time for it. So next to reviewing resources available, your group, what they are doing, your research lab, your university, academia, publications, uh, relevant conference, if you can attend, next step will be take time. Take time and make sure that a good idea requires patience, exactly like a fisher. He or she should wait, make sure that he's deep enough so that he's having a good catch. Well, then you can directly move into translating your idea. Once you grabbed a concept or idea or you have a, 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 a proposition, you can directly apply it on a quad chart. And as you can see, this is an example. You have to start with the title. This is a template I'm using. If you would like to have it, just send me an email. I can send it to, to you or I can have it in a link. You should come up with the title of your research topic. Then you should identify your aim and objectives. And I mentioned before what's the difference between them. The aim is the overarching aim that you're trying to work on. And then the objectives are more kind of operational uh, tasks that you would like to work on to make sure that you reach the objective. Once you did that, you move to the audience part. The audience part is very important. You should identify the stakeholders. Why is this research done? Now, if we are developing in the business world products or services, the first thing we do before developing a service or a product, we do a market analysis. We ask users, what do you want? What do you think? Uh, what are your expectations? And based on that, we develop our product or we develop our solution or services. The same is in academia. I cannot go uh, propose a new concept or idea or uh, uh, um, a research concept and go work on it for months at least and push it without making sure that will be somebody will benefit from my work. So please make sure that this part is very well covered. Who is the project for? Who will benefit from the project? Who will uh, it involve? These are key questions. Make sure that you answer them during the uh, concept or research uh, idea assess assessment phase. Well, then you can move after to the innovation. And the innovation is not easy. The innovation requires expertise because it requires someone who knows what was done before, what is there in the market, what is there in the public, in the, in the, in the academic work, what was published before, what is the state of the art, uh, what are the... Uh, previously published uh, literature on that topic. And then this person can help you to sharpen and, and make sure that uh, uh, your concept is new. Well, there is a responsibility from your side. You should also do this work and uh, make sure that your concept is new. And therefore, the step one on the review was very important. But it's also useful here to discuss with peers, with experts, with supervisors, how far your project is new what uh, is not done by others before in this uh, research and what makes this project different. And this is a very important question. And a lot of uh, projects get refused just because there is no added value or the work was done before or the work is not contributing to knowledge uh, or it's just a problem, operational problem uh, in the society that was solved and we have a problem here with governance or management. Uh, this does not make the problem up to the level of a scientific problem. So it's very important to keep into account the innovation as a very important key indicator. Discuss the innovation, read yourself, uh, uh, challenge the concept with several people until you make sure that there is a substance and there is sufficient innovation and added value of your work. 
And finally, you have to come up with the impact. The impact here is very important. Here you should show the output of your work and how is it relevant and what kind of impact it could have. I would tell you that if we are developing a cure, the impact of this cure that we can have uh, um, curing people, X number of people, if they have a certain uh, uh, sickness. The same goes with uh, uh, the research of your area. Make sure that whatever you are presenting will have an impact. Well, how can I have an impact, impact and I'm a little researcher or I'm an undergrad or a postgrad? Well, you can have an impact if you provide a good understanding of a problem, if you provide good recommendations on a problem, if you provide a website, if you provide a tool, an application, a product, a framework of thinking, if you develop a policy, if you develop a flowchart, if you develop a methodology, uh, and so on and so on. And in the proposal writing presentation, I describe enough, a lot of examples of impact outcomes. Just go to the outcome section and you will find several different outputs that can be used as an impact. And I would say in the least way of providing an impact is to publish your work. So therefore you will find that in many international universities we are asking our students to publish their work so that at least what they did as a research will be available online so that others can benefit from it after identifying very good the audience or the stakeholders of your work. So keep into account that the impact is important. It is very difficult to quantify the impact before doing the research. I know that. And in many situations we keep asking, how can I know something, how it will be its impact before even getting it or bringing it out? Well, this is the challenge. Keep thinking, create scenarios, uh, discuss, validate your impact with others to make sure that potentially this work can have an impact or not. And already if you did a good uh, a literature review and a good technology review, you can most probably guarantee that your work can have an impact if it is significant enough. Well, this is an example of a work done in my lab. It was a researcher. She was working on the influence of climate change on buildings in the Belgian context. And simply the objective of her work was to study and understand the impact of climate change on the housing sector in Belgium and the objective was to establish a protocol that is applicable in order to come up with measures to prevent or mitigate climate change influence on comfort and energy con con consumption in residential buildings. So this was the aim and objective, very clear uh, to the point there is a differentiation between the aim and the objective and then she went to the stakeholders and the audience and in this study she identified the audience are the construction engineers, architects, builders, um, researchers in the building sector in general and definitely she also identified uh, weather file or meteorological experts uh, 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 that work on a high uh, or work on weather file. So this was the audience. Then on the innovation part this already research, she proved that it was not done before in the Belgian con context. So she did a comprehensive review and she figured out that nobody before her studied the impact of climate change of these residential housings in the Belgian context. And from, her, from there, she validated that with several uh, uh, people, with the supervisor, uh, with peer uh, researchers, uh, with uh, some uh, experts to make sure that the idea was not presented before and she made to make sure that the idea is important also. And then she went into uh, the study by uh, investigating the influence, the particular influence of climate change of increasing or decreasing the heating needs in the building stock. Finally, she discussed the impact and in this work, the impact expected was to cater and present recommendations for the people working in the renovation sector, building renovation sector, provide uh, 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 fine-tuned recommendation for the Bel Belgian market and presenting uh, 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 modified or adaptive, adaptive uh, or flexible concepts for future construction. So this was the impact of the work and the work has been published so far, it's available online. Once anybody will type the keywords climate change, uh, building sector, 
residential, he or she can directly identify this research, go through the thesis. So this is also an important impact, and you never know, this could be developed to be in the future a research project that comes up with a policy or comes up with a recommendation for the building sector. So this is an example for a complete quad chart. I'm sorry it's written in French, but I'm sure you followed me uh, while I'm describing it and you can understand uh, the topic in general. Well, another important thing, once you are done with your quad chart, don't forget your graphical outcome. Before starting your concept, you should identify what is my graphical uh, concept. Let's open this bag. This is the bag of visualizations. Every time somebody develops a research idea or a research concept, I ask them to come up with the images and the pictures that they would like to generate. This is very important. It's very important to visualize your results beforehand. You have to think, are you going to produce graphs, tables, images, recommendation, lists? What is your final work? What are you going to present? It's very important beforehand to see it and visualize it and include it with your quad chart so that you have a quad chart and then you have uh, your uh, images that can also be used to summarize uh, your information and in this sense you can use them to sum up uh, uh, the graphs uh, or, or the image and present your work. So don't forget that next to your quad chart, this is the same example, next to having your quad chart done, the four topics you are already well explored them and before you have identified the literature and contextualized the idea, you did a deep analysis, you were patient, you took your time to come to a good idea, to a deep meaningful idea, you work out your, your exercise with the four topics, you should not forget to come up to the graphical outcome. The graphical outcome is a kind of visualization. And what kind of out outcome I will be producing is a question I should ask myself every time when I am developing my idea. Data of all types. Am I going to generate or produce a video, images, spreadsheets, raw data in any uh, format? Am I going to come up with a format, software, a script, a workflow or a tool? Uh, am I coming get a, come am I, am I coming out with a data software management plans a conference poster a presentation a reports case studies policy communication briefs these are all types of outcomes that I need to visualize before I start my thesis and while I'm developing my research idea and while I'm assessing my research idea it's not only that I'm looking at the quad chart and the aim objectives audience innovation impact, I'm also looking at the potential visualization of our outcome. What will be my outcome? How does it look? It's very important to do this exercise early on before you start to work to make sure that you have an idea what are you going to do and what are you going to generate. And this is another example of the same research study on climate change influence on the building sector or the residential building sector in Belgium. And as you can see, these are different graphics graphs comparing the 2000 climate uh, scenario with the 2050 climate scenario, comparing the cooling loads with the heating loads. Another scenario is comparing the total loads. Another uh, graph is comparing the energy profile on an annual basis in, the, in, in 2000 and in 2050. This is another graph talking about the comfort and the indoor temperature and what kind of expectation of the indoor temperature profiles on a mon monthly basis uh, in 2000 and in 2050. And finally, a comparison between the satisfaction of users in the both scenarios. So this visualization was done before the research was developed and it helped very much the researcher to sharpen her vision and make sure what she is seeking or what information are she is looking to produce. So please, I ask you to work on that. And I give you a final example. This is again an example. We find the objectives, aims, we find the audience and stakeholders, we find the innovation well identified, we will find the impact properly developed, and we will find the results or the expected results before even developing the work, comparisons, for example, graph, uh, data processing, and from there we can come to the end of the presentation. Well, this was it. I wanted to cross this message. It's very important. I invite you to use this uh, quad chart 
and the outcome graph. I have a PowerPoint template. If you would like to have it, just send me an email. I can send it to you. And it's very important before you go with your research proposal, we will, before you develop it and come up uh, presented with other, make sure that you use the quad chart and make sure that you visualize your result. Thank you for your attention and don't forget to subscribe for my channel. Thank you.